Hello, my friends. How are you guys doing? Um, today we are going to make pesto. I'm really excited to show you this today. Why? Because I'm going to show you two pestos. I'm not going to show you one. I never get to show you only one thing. I like to show you two things. Uh, we are going to be making pesto, the, not, the regular pesto, Italian pesto, the one that everybody loves, the green pesto. And it all starts with awesome, nice, fresh ingredients. I learned this a little bit ago because I'm not great with plants, but snip up. And if you observe here, I am using all of that part. I'm not just taking the leaves. I don't want the bottom stems, which are a little thick, but I do want those because they will add to the flavor and they will add to the volume as well. So I am trimming. Oh, I better put it on my back, on my container here. I'm going to up these little ones. You never cut. Well, you never cut below the new leaves. You try to cut over the new leaves so that that keeps growing. Am I an expert on plants? I am definitely not. I am the least person that can keep a plant alive around. If not, you can ask my neighbors that they can see my house with no plants whatsoever. Um, I cannot keep them alive for my life being. But I might be able to keep these ones alive, um, but I plan on giving them to my, my son-in-law. So I left it a little naked. I'm gonna put this behind me. We have la loosely packed, there we go. Loosely pack about about two cups. So I'm gonna add that into my food processor. Perfect. I am not the nonna, I am not that Italian grandmother that it's going to be making this into a pesto. No, I'm not. I'm gonna use a food processor. Um, I do have been making pesto for a long time, though pesto is an Italian, um, Peru have its own version of pesto, we'll, we'll go into it later. We have basil, we have uh, pine nuts, I'm going to put a quarter of a cup of pine nuts, if you want a little extra, go for it. Uh, also, they are toasted pine nuts, we're going to go into garlic. Amounts and quantities will be on the recipe because I'm kind of making a quarter of a regular recipe. I have those two. Also, I, like I said, ingredients are super important. I'm using Parmesano Reggiano. Parmesano Reggiano is one of the best cheeses and it tastes delicious. And I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of that. It's so expensive that I do measure it. <laughs> I'm gonna add a nice pinch of salt. There we go. But the one thing that you don't wanna forget is to add a tiny little bit of lime or lemon juice. Uh, the reason to lime or lemon juice is not to flavor. There is no flavor involved. The moment that this gets cut, this, that very, very moment, it starts to oxidate. And if I add the lemon or the lime from right now, it's going to keep nice and it's gonna keep nice and very nice and green. So I'm gonna start with adding my oil and I'm going to add about an eighth of a cup first. And like I said, don't listen to quantities. The quantities, I'm changing them because I'm just making a quarter of a recipe. And plus oil, change. If you want this, if you want the pesto to be a spread, it's going to need a little bit less of olive oil. And if you wanted to use it for sauce, you might need to add a little bit more. So I have my, my every ingredient, it's in there. My pine nuts, my garlic, my basil, my beautiful parmesano, and my olive oil. And I'm going to pull this. There we go, there comes the beauty. Oh yeah, baby, oh yeah. I'm gonna open it. I'm gonna give it a little, I'm gonna use my spatula a little bit in there. I can see 
that I want a little bit more of olive oil in there, so I'm gonna add my other quarter, my other eighth of a cup. And we are learning first the original. We're learning the pesto, 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 pesto. Oh my gosh. The other day I was so disappointed I did the store bought pesto and you know and it got all greasy on my food and I really hated that. We have it right here. I'm gonna use a different spoon. So I wanna taste this. Mm. The salt Parmesano Royano has that umami flavor and it's salty and it has almost enough salt so I'm adding a tiny pinch to my other pinch that I added and that will be enough for this. So I'm gonna grab my container I have ready here. These ones go into a pretty jar container. Oh, oh wow, it tastes so good. Garlic perfect amount of garlic. If you want more garlic, if you like it to be stronger on garlic, go ahead, add some more in. But always remember to take away the end piece of the garlic. You didn't saw me doing that because I already did that with all my garlic. And I always um, mince it and keep it here already minced without the little root end of the garlic because that root end of the garlic is bitter. And that goes for all your cooking, not for just the best food time. Anytime you're gonna use garlic, take away that, trim that little end. So I'm gonna put this over here. This goes behind me. My beautiful machine that I love to pieces is gonna go under. And I'm gonna disconnect this. we go and I'm gonna bring for the Peruvian one I'm gonna bring you the blender no, sorry the mixer oh well I don't know is it called blender I think it's called blender yes it's called blender I always get them all confused let's just say it in Spanish liquidora so I have my liquidora and in my liquidora, I'm gonna put all the ingredients, but now let's review the ingredients because now this time around, they change a tiny little bit. Basil is an ingredient that's a little expensive. So in Peru, um, basil is a flavoring ingredient, but the base of a Peruvian spaghetti is spinach, a good bunch of spinach. I have approximately six cups loosely packed and I'm going to start with the liquid ingredients first. This time I'm bringing in milk, milk, dairy, you know the cheese is dairy. You use a little bit of cheese but you don't use a lot because it's expensive and that's the main reason why Peruvian pesto change it from, from that original pesto. We had a big Italian community in our country and well things change a little bit so we have that I'm gonna also show you the oils you can choose oh well sorry it's not olive oil here I always say it it's my canola I love the bottle so I kept it um, this is our olive oil and this is my canola oil my olive oil I'm gonna put a little bit for flavoring but I'm gonna more likely I'm going to put more of the canola to keep that Peruvian flavor around a little bit more. So in the Peruvian pesto, I need approximately, I'm trying to think, uh, approximately like a half a cup of oil. So I'm gonna use a quarter cup, a quarter cup. That's another quarter cup and I'm completing with a little bit of olive oil, perfect, just for flavor. Again, this time around, pine nuts. 
Pine nuts, in my times there, pine nuts were not even available. You use Brazilian nuts. Um, you can use Brazilian nuts, you can use walnuts, you can use um, pecans. In my case, I'm gonna use my, my cup of pecans previously toasted, which I got you in another video on how to toast, um, how to toast nuts. And then we're gonna add our garlic. I'm calculating the, how many garlic I need because I already have it chopped, but I'm t I tell you in the recipe how many. And I'm going to put this in, a little bit at a time because I don't wanna make a big mess. And I'm going to put my basil into at this time. Then I'll start adding the rest of the spinach little by little. And now to the cheese, you know, it is, like I was mentioning, it is expensive. So we don't use a whole lot, so I'm gonna use this is about half a cup. And let me check my own recipe because I have it right here. I, I, I have it as a quarter cup, so I'm gonna take away a little bit. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter. More cheese sometimes the better. There we go. Did I connect it? Yes. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna hear a noise. Open this and I'm gonna finish adding all of this. I haven't added the pinch of salt or the tiny little bit of that. Uh, my pinch of salt. There we go. Oh, it's a little harder. There we go. There we go. I'm gonna taste this. Yeah, baby. There we go. Need a little salt. Mm, tastes really good. Now, I'm gonna finish liquefying this because I wanna talk to you just a second longer. About Peruvian pesto. Um, I think. I wrote it down on my blog maybe like four years ago. But lately I have seen Peruvian pesto in some of the best blogs and the best magazines. But it is amazing how food travels, how food goes around. Pesto is very simple and the greatness of pesto is that you make, I would say, make yourself a couple of batches or maybe one batch the first time. But it becomes your fast food, and especially Peruvian pesto. Not so much the pesto pesto, but the pesto from Peru, the, the version that we're making, it's great, very, very awesome to freeze. The other pesto, you can freeze it too. But this one freezes, and then the day of tomorrow, Let's say in a week, you decide that it's time to make some tallarines verdes, how we call them. And all you need to do after that, defrost the little container, make sure it's defrosted, and as soon as pasta is cooked, mix it, mix it real good. This container will probably feed approximately, uh, it will cover approximately 12 ounces of pasta which is enough for a family of four, maybe even five. So I'm gonna sneak all of what's left in here. I'm gonna sneak it out and I'm going to fill my container. 
This pesto, if you can see, is more of a sauce. So this pesto is more of a spread. Both of them together, mmm, delicious. This one great for sandwiches, great for pasta, great for everything. This one is specifically to use for your tallarines verdes. You can buy a big box and have a nice weeknight meal. Um, I hope you like these two pestos and the fusion of the two cuisines, Peruvian and Italian, and of course the original Italian. And um, thank you so much for being here with me and have a great day.